Oh, hello everyone. I do believe we are live. I'm just checking these settings at the minute. Uh, oh, that's better. Put the old video on full screen. How's everybody doing? Happy Easter, everybody. Well, good evening, Vivi Vivian. Should I say good evening? Or should I say good night? Ma'ayang <laughs> Gabi. You all right? The door is closed. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Highland, hope you're well. Also wishing Ken and her family happy Easter, much celebrated in the Philippines. Yes, it is celebrated over here big time. I went down to the town yesterday, not because I needed to go there. It was simply because I wanted to see if anything was open. And there were a few stalls and shops open, but they were mainly like muslin stalls. That I don't think they, they don't celebrate Easter. So it doesn't make any difference to them whether they're open or shut. Most of the shops in the town were completely shut up. That was on Good Friday. Now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure in England on Good Friday, I'm sure most of the shops are actually open. Yeah, I think it's Easter Sunday that all the shops are, are completely shut like a ghost town. So, uh, yeah. yeah, the other thing I did notice about over here, you know, after Christmas in England, all of a sudden, all the supermarket shelves will get stacked out with chocolate Easter eggs. There's none. Zero. Zero Easter eggs over here. You don't see them. I quizzed Ken about it, and she says, well, for Easter, if we do eggs, we just hard boil eggs, paint them and hide them and do like hunt the egg and stuff like that, like you used to do back in the 1970s. You know, <clears throat> these days, everyone just goes out and buys bloody chocolate Easter eggs. But there's not even any advertising for Easter. And, you know, in, in like Tesco's in England, they, they just sell a whole shed load of stuff to do with Easter. There's nothing like that over here at all. You, If you went into any of the supermarkets, you wouldn't even know. But Easter is a massive thing over here because it's a big Catholic country. And uh, most of the actual people, they go to church. So that's the difference. Anyway. Thank you, Vivian, for joining the live stream. I shall move on. I've got a, I've got a few little bullet points to get through today. Uh, John, hello. Good, good, good evening, wherever you are. Hope you're loving the weather. Yes, I am loving the weather. By the way, when you come to mention the weather, I'm not exactly going to be loving it today. My location, 30... 36 degrees it's going to be today. It's 22 at the minute, and it's around about 6 in the morning. This is a nice time to actually put a live stream, because later on, when the sun gets up properly, it's going to be... Whoo! <laughs> it's not it's not too bad if it's really hot and you've got a nice breeze blowing. With a breeze, it makes it comfortable, but when there's no wind or breeze at all, it's like full-on sticky heat. It's very nice at that kind of point to have some air conditioning going on. Uh, morning, Dwayne. Evening, Dwayne. Uh, hope you and Ken Tyler uh, rest are all good. Keep up the good work and price and everything like the MOT. Lol. <laughs> you look uh, happy, no stress, a lot of karma. Take it day by day and don't, co don't come back. <laughs> I've got to come back at some point. <laughs> No, it's, it's quite uh, relaxed out here. Uh, yeah, it's all good. The as, as far as the video I put out, I keep, you know, because I'm, I come from England, I keep comparing everything to England. But there is no, I, I should have actually worded it better, actually. There is no such thing as an MOT test because MOT stands for Ministry of Transport. There is no Ministry of Transport out here. It doesn't exist. There's no MOT test out here. What it what it basically is, is an annual 
registration renewal for your vehicle. And that includes an emission test and, and possibly, you know, lights, tires and a few other checks they might do. But it's, it's, it's nothing compared to the actual test that gets carried out in England. So I'm trying to find out about the insurance as well. So I'm, I'm going to get back to you on that sort of because some people want to know whether there's an insurance cover that's included in that fee when you go for this registration renewal or whether you have to get separate insurance. I know you can buy separate car or vehicle insurance here, but I'm not sure whether a third party kind of insurance gets included in your registration renewal. But I'll, I'll check that out for another day. Anyway, Dwayne, have a good Easter, mate. Good to hear from you. Uh, happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter to you. Hello, how are you doing out there? Looks like you had some rain yesterday. Uh, yes. We had a good old downpour. There's a blue barrel. You can just see it there. It actually filled that barrel to the brim and it was overflowing, pouring out because the, the roof guttering just there. Oh, I can't. <laughs> well, the roof guttering, which is just above that barrel, it, it, it poured the rain water, pours off the roof and goes into that barrel and it was absolutely overflowing. And I was sticky. You know, we, we put your arms down like that. Your arms kind of stick where you're sweating so much. It's so humid. I quickly got some barrels of water, buckets of water, and uh, took a quick shower <laughs> like that. <laughs> much, much refreshing. Uh, uh, John, has Ken managed to teach you entirely much Philippines? We know a few words. I'm a bit lazy. I haven't really been doing much. I should be learning a couple words. You know, I, I think I should be learning, I don't know, four or five words a week, but I'm not really sure I like doing that. I need a bit more motivation to kick my ass. But I, I know a few words, uh, not much. But as time goes by, I will learn a bit more. I would love to. I don't think I'll ever be able to speak Messiah. It's uh, I'm probably too old, <laughs> but I will try my best to at least put a few phrases together as soon as I can. Then it would be much helpful, especially if I'm out somewhere, I can actually speak to some people, some like keywords to sort of like. So sometimes when Ken isn't with me, it's difficult to communicate to some of the people. I mean, a lot of them do actually speak pretty good English, but there are some that, that, that can't. And uh, it's only like kind of fitting. I should learn as much as I can and I, I will do in time. Uh, Steve, hello, Steve. How are you doing? Shortage of front right wheel sensors. Plenty of left ones available. Guess which I had to change. Just buy a left one. There's no difference in the sensor. It's only the bracket that's different. The bracket from left and right are different angles. So if you buy a left sensor, just take the bracket off and put it on the right side. It will still fit. There you go. Nice and simple. Uh, why two rights go why two rights go wrong but not the left <laughs> yeah. okay <laughs> yeah uh, all we ever had in stock at steve's was about 10 or however many we had right hand side front wheel speed sensors for the mark fives that's all we ever had we just pulled the bracket off flung the bracket in the bin and put the connected the wire on either side and then just plugged it back into the old bracket. Done. Hello, Matty. How are you? You're live. Yes. Yes. I thought I'd pull one. I'm going out this morning. I'm going to pick some eggs up from the Kezon Town, just past Kezon Town. It's a little bit of a trek from here. So uh, I thought I'd pull this quickly for an hour and a half or something like that and get it out of the way while it's nice and cool. I'm good to hear from you, Matty. Uh, Darren, do you miss mechanicking? Mm, I do a little. I do a little bit, but uh, I'm I'm kind of enjoying it out here at the minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no. I'll tell you something. I wouldn't want to be fixing cars out here, not in this heat. If I was in a garage out here, I'd seriously need some air conditioning, or I'd, I'd bloody melt. It is so hot. Back in England, most of the time, you when you're working, it's either it's a nice kind of temperatures to work in but out here it's <laughs> uh steve if you had a heart attack 
how long would an ambulance take to arrive? Uh, you'd probably be lucky if it ever did arrive. Now, you'd probably have about 30 people stood around you putting you on Facebook, but I don't think the ambulance would be arriving anytime soon. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of how it is out here. Uh, Darren, do you miss England? Yes, of course I miss England. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of things I miss about England. England's my home country. I love England. But, you know, <coughs> in your life, you have to do other things. And coming out here, <coughs> you know, I've got to be honest with you, it is certainly a privilege to be here. I mean, you've got to do things in your life. And I don't want, didn't want to be in one spot my entire life and do nothing. So, like I keep saying, I'm doing this. If it all turns to shit, so be it. At least I've tried. That's that's, a, that's all I can really say. <clears throat> Will you move back to England? <clears throat> uh, that's an unknown, completely unknown. I'm just taking things slowly and see how things progress. So at the minute, I don't have no concrete plans. And even if I did have concrete plans, <sighs> they can all go wrong in a heartbeat. Believe me, Dan, I've seen over the course of my life, you go from day to day doing the same thing and you think this is it, this is how your life is. And then all of a sudden, bang, something happens and your life is completely changed in a split second and you're somewhere else. Uh, it's happened to me numerous times. I was, I was gonna make a video at some point explaining things that I've been through uh, I might actually do that when I get the time, but it's going to be quite a long video. So, <laughs> but then, then you'll kind of understand. Well, most people know this because a lot of people, like all you people out there, you've been through so many events in your life, good or bad. So, but when you actually sit down and tell your story, which I think you should, it's interesting. People want to hear it. <clears throat> so anyway, I better move on. I've, uh, I've got a few things I was just going to talk about because the, the title of this video is basically what have I learned in the two and a half months I've been out here. Not bloody much, but I have learned a few things. And the first thing I want to go over is talking about money. And this will apply to pretty much anyone. If you're just coming out here or anywhere in the world, I guess, but I'm going to like kind of relate it to the Philippines because that's where I am and this is what I've done. I'm only going to explain to you the things that I have done myself because there's no point me trying to give you advice on things I haven't done. I could be totally wrong. I normally am anyway. But <clears throat> before I came out here, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be a good idea if I got some travel money, like some cash in notes, pesos, they do notes and pesos. So I thought <clears throat> maybe if I exchange 3,000 pounds sterling into Philippine pesos, I could put that in my bag and I could bring that into the country with me. Then I'd have a handful of cash ready to spend wherever I needed it. So that, that was my thinking. So <clears throat> I went up to my local Tesco's where they had like a money exchanger. They had a person in a little booth who exchanges, you know, money. Uh, I said to him, how much to exchange £3,000 sterling into Philippine pesos? And he was like, well, we don't, we don't keep that money here. We'll have to order that in. I can do that for you. But it all goes on their exchange rate and how much they're getting out of it, okay? And when I looked into it, it turned out it was something like 64 pesos in the pound. Well, at the minute, it's it's about 71 pesos in the pound here. So when I figured it out, basically, if I took out, if I exchanged 1,000 pound British money into Philippine pesos, it would have cost me around about 84 pound to do that, like nearly a tenth of a thousand pound. And I thought, holy crap, that, that's a lot of money. So that would be three times 84 if I was to take out £3,000, that's a lot of money to swallow, really, when you think about it. And I thought, no, I'm not doing that. I've, I've never had the need in my lifetime to exchange money, for travel money, to go anywhere. <clears throat> so I was on a, a bit of a learning curve. I know a lot of people have done this and you know all about it, but I didn't. Okay, so I've had to learn this myself. 
So I didn't do it. I thought I'm not going to pay £84 for every £1,000 I want to change. So I thought, stuff it. You know what? I'm going to come over to the Philippines without a goddamn penny in my pocket, okay? I had my bank card on me, and that's it. I knew for a fact that my stopover was in Singapore, Shangi Airport. In Shangi Airport, it's like glitz and glamour. There's no problem there. You can take your... I have a Barclays visa. In, in the Shangi Airport, you can go anywhere in that airport. You can use your card. No problem whatsoever. Wi-Fi card, anything. They all take it. It's a very, you know, technological airport. <laughs> They've got all the amenities there. You go into the toilets and it's like, well, <laughs> these, these are nice. <laughs> Everything's good there. But when you get to the Philippines, it's a different story altogether. But anyway, I came over here with zero cash, but I didn't need any cash in my pocket because I was meeting Ken. So it's not like I had to come out the airport in Davo City and think, oh, my God, I need some money. I didn't need that. I had a car waiting for me and then I was drove back to the house. So I was fine. But. When it comes to withdrawing money over here, I've been through this before, so I'll quickly blow over it again. If you have a debit card, you can go to an ATM. The problem with that is most of the time, if you've got a bank card from, say, England, you can use it in most of the ATMs and you can withdraw money here. You can withdraw up to 10,000 pesos at a time in the majority of the ATMs. 10,000 pesos is roughly equivalent to 140 pound in English money. But as I found out, when you withdraw money out of an ATM, out of just about all of the banks over here, apart from HSBC, which you probably won't find unless you're in the big city, the bank over here, whether it be the BDO, Land Bank or whatever it is, they would charge you 250 pesos, which is roughly £3.50, something like that, in English money. Then I found out that your own bank, my bank Barclays, were also charging me four pounds something nearly four pound fifty for the same transaction so i was getting charged by both banks and in some cases it was working out depending on what the rate was around about nine pound to withdraw 140 pound which was ten thousand pesos and i thought yeah, i can't go on like this this is ridiculous that's a lot of money to be swallowing every time you make a withdrawal so i looked into other things and I finally got to the answer of, of the best way of getting my money out from my bank in the Philippines. And it's simply to use Western Union. Now, there's there's lots of others out there. There's there's Wise, there's, there's Zoom, there's Remitly and all them. They're all much of a much. Most of them all charge a fee. With Western Union, I am able, I found now they've got a new bank transfer feature because I was paying £3.90 to withdraw money through Western Union. You can send, when you're here in the Philippines, if you get a Western Union account, and I'll, I'll just stick with Western Union because it's, it's what I know, it's what I use. On your mobile phone, you can download the Western Union app and you can send money in the Philippines to yourself. So if you've got your bank back in England, you send money to yourself and all you need to get your money out is your passport and obviously the tracking number that they give you through an email. So, but the good thing about Western Union is I can withdraw up to their limit. I don't know what their limit is, but it's quite a bit. Uh, if I wanted to withdraw £3,000 here into Philippine pesos, it will cost me it, it was costing me £3.90. It's one fee they charge you. It doesn't matter how much money you take out. But with their new bank transfer feature, it's now costing me £1.90. So no matter how much I want to withdraw now, it's going to cost me £1.90. The only downside is that you have to go into one of their offices to get the money. And sometimes there could be a queue in there. So you might have to wait a bit. But that would be the same if you... Uh, were to get your money out through one of your partners in a bank over here going into a bank over here i wouldn't say it's a good experience you've got to go in there get a ticket sit down wait for your number to be called and then go up to the cashier so it's still going to take you just as bloody long in a bank most of the time so but i i, I kind of like the western union it kind of works for me and, and I, I kind of figure i can swallow one pound 90 
to withdraw however much money I want to withdraw. It's that's that's a small amount of money, if you ask me. Another thing I will say, yeah, and if you're just uh, coming out here for vacation, then it doesn't really apply to you. But someone like me, I'm out here for I don't know how long. Uh, I keep my bank account in England. <clears throat> I'm not interested in opening a bank account over here. It's not going to bloody happen. My money will stay in Barclays Bank in England. That way I know it's safe. I've heard too many bad stories about banks over here, things like transferring money into a bank over here and then not being able to transfer it back to your bank if things go wrong and this, that and the other. It just seems like a load of hassle. So unless you're out here living permanently and you know you're going to die out here, it might be worth getting a bank account out here. It probably will be. But for someone like me, I mean, I'm nothing more really. It doesn't matter how many, how long I'm out here for. I'm not a citizen of this country. I'm just a guest. So I'm going to keep my money where I know where it's safe. And that's back in England, in Barclays. And I don't care about spending £1.90 to make a withdrawal. That works for me. I will say one other thing as well. Mobile phones. Now, I'm paying like £17 a month on O2 for my British phone number. Uh, I was thinking to myself, shall I cancel that £17 a month and get rid of my mobile phone with O2? Because I've got a new number over here now. Uh, getting a, a SIM card over here is pretty straightforward. You've got to register it and all that, but it's cheap. I get lots and lots of gigabyte on this Go129. It's, 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 it's pin money, okay, and I get loads of gigabyte. I can walk around with loads of data, and it's great. So I've got a local phone number here. But that's no good to me if I've got a problem back in England. If I've got a problem with my bank or, or a website that wants to send me a text message and there's no other way of getting hold of them, then I'm going to need my British phone number. And a lot of the, the, the things you've got set up in England, when you come out here, they won't recognise a different phone number. They want to, they want to use the phone number you, you gave them. So for me, I think it's, it's a good thing to keep, I'm going to keep paying that £17 a month to keep my phone number. I would like it to be cheaper. I don't know if there's a way I can sort of like keep my number and just keep it active even though I'm not using it. But I don't have a dual SIM in my phone. So I've taken my, my O2 SIM card out of my phone. And if I do need to receive a text, here's, here's an example. If I go on to a government website, like like say say you, you're retired and you want, to, you want to check your pension, national insurance contributions and all that, them kind of websites, they will send you a text message with a code so you can log into their site. They're not going to send a text message to a Philippine phone number. They want to use your British phone number to send the message to. So I'd have to get my O2 SIM and put it back in my phone to receive that message. The other option is to set your British phone number up with an international tariff. But that's going to be pretty expensive, especially if you're not using it. It's OK if you're using it. If, if you're out here, you know, like if you go to Europe, you've got, you've got roaming and all that. It's, it's not a problem. It's going to cost you a bit extra, but so what? You're in Europe. But over here, you'd have to set up a tariff, which is going to be quite expensive. And if you're making phone calls from the Philippines back to England, it ain't going to be cheap. And who does that anyway, you know, on, on a regular basis? Most people use WhatsApp and stuff like that these days. Just don't cost you nothing. It's, it's just Wi-Fi. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. If you are out here for a prolonged period of time, I do seriously advise you to keep your British phone number because there probably will come a point, you may not think so, but there probably will come a point where you are going to need that phone number and you'll wish you'd kept it. So I shall keep that for as long as possible. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is when you get off the plane and you come into the Philippines, it all depends where you're living. Uh, you'll probably find, if, if, you're, if you're in a city, I guess the amenities are going to be a lot better. But in rural areas, they're not very good at all, especially when it comes to public conveniences. So be prepared for non-existent toilets or toilets that have got nothing more than a bucket of water in them. 
So no toilet paper. In fact, they don't even like you putting toilet paper down the toilets here because I think the drains are smaller and they block the toilets up. So if you do want to use toilet paper and not the bucket of water to splash up your ass, I seriously advise you to carry a toilet roll in your bag wherever you go in the Philippines. <laughs> that, that's a, that, is a, that is a pro tip. Also, when you're over here, the food in a lot of cases, obviously depending where you are, if you're out of the big cities, is going to be a lot different to what you're used to in England. And if you start eating the local food, there's a high chance of in the first week or so, you're going to have a case of the shits. So pretty much guaranteed it's going to happen to a lot of people. Obviously, you get over it after a while. So <laughs> you, you just got to be aware of these, these sort of things that can happen. And the other thing I'm just going to touch on, which I've banged on about so bloody much now, is the insects. Watch out for the insects, especially mosquitoes. This is like, oh, it's gone six in the morning, okay? Dusk and dawn, the mosquitoes are out and they like biting. And if you're in a rural area where there's plenty of water and trees and all that around, the mosquitoes will come for you. And a lot, and some people, they avoid. But other people, like me, they like to bloody well bite. And because it's dawn at the minute, I'm wearing a pair of jeans. When it gets warmer during the day, I will take the jeans off and put my shorts on when I'm a bit safer. You can put off lotion on, which will ward off. They don't like the off lotion, won't come near you. But I don't like putting the chemicals on. I don't like putting chemicals all over my bloody body. So I try to avoid that if I possibly can. But yeah, the mosquitoes are certainly a problem. But I will say, as I have witnessed now, when I came over here for nearly a month in 2023, I was bitten down my arms, on my back, down my legs, and it wasn't a good experience. I was, it's itchy all the time, and you're going out for a day out here, there, and everywhere, and all you're doing is, is like itching your legs, and you have to get them, you know them bottles of alcohol that everybody was using to wipe, to wipe their hands and everything during COVID? If you've got a bottle of that alcohol, get some wet wipes, something like that, pour the alcohol on the wet wipes and rub it all over the, your legs and that where you've been bitten. It's lovely. It's nice and soothing. Excellent stuff. So uh, it certainly takes the sting out of the bites. But when I come back over here this year, I knew I was in for more of the same, and I sure was. I was getting bitten again. And I've taken certain precautions. But what I have found... Because I've been bitten that many times by mosquitoes, now, after two and a half months, when I'm bitten, the bites aren't lasting long. They'll sting for a short while, and then within a space of a few hours, they're healing up really quick. Whereas originally, when I got here, if I got bit, the bites would probably last for a couple of days, two to three days sometimes. Now, they're clearing up within a space of a day and they don't sting half as much. So my body is actually healing these bites so much bloody quicker. And I've been watching, I've been keeping a good eye on this. So your body does adapt to these bites. And I think the longer I'm here, it'll probably get to the point where my body or skin is hardly reacting to these bites at all. Because when you get bit, you get like a little white bit and a red rash around the outside. And uh, once you get that, it'll come up originally, it'll come up initially and after the bite, and then within the space of a few hours, it's almost gone. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm walking around most of the time now with hardly a bite on me. They do get me occasionally, but it's not a bother anymore. So I'm happy about that. Anyway, I suppose I'd better go through a few comments here. <coughs> uh, Millie, hello. The Philippines look nice. Hope you're having a good time. All the best. Well, thank you very much. That's that's very nice of you. It is nice over here. I think if everybody gets a chance, maybe, maybe not here, but anywhere in the world, <laughs> if you can get out and go somewhere and do something like this, you know, even if it's just for a vacation, a few weeks, it's worth it. Life is for living and you've got to have experiences. And, you know, for, for me, I, I work, I've worked for 40 years. And it's like, I don't want to work my entire life until I retire 
and then think, what am I going to do now? I wanted to do something while I'm still able to. I don't know what condition I'm going to be in when I'm retired. If I reach 67 years old, I might be in a wheelchair for all I know. What bloody good will it be then? So I'm doing what I can now. And, you know, it's shit or bust. Anyway, thank you, Millie. Uh, Matthew, hello. Uh, loving your videos. Hope you have a great Easter. Yes, you too, Matthew. I've, I, you know, I've, I've never, I've never really celebrated Easter. That's funny, that. I'm not, I'm not a religious person. I don't, I'm not a church goer or anything like that. I kind, I kind of believe, but I don't know. I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a total atheist, but I've never sort of like celebrated. I, I think it's becoming a thing in England now. Who does celebrate, like, actually religiously celebrate Easter and, and Christmas and all that? I think it's all become sort of like proper guys now in England. It's all about commercialised, should I say. <laughs> what you, what they can sell you. Uh, Matty, eggs are a pagan thing. I'm not sure they, they have anything to do. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> you sometimes have to question yourself, don't you? I have said it in the past to myself. I said, what the hell have Easter eggs got to do with, you know, Easter? It's the death of Christ. He was put on the cross. Where, where do eggs come into? <laughs> I su do you know what? I suppose if you, you'd have to Google it. I'm not even going to go there. But, yeah, <laughs> I get what you're saying. <clears throat> Maine Coon Cats, hello. And from a windy and rain, Cambridge. Blimey, I do you know I like Cambridge in the summertime, walking around. Nice place. I don't like it in the winter though. I prefer a shop in Maui. <laughs> well, I know they've got a few Maui's in Cambridge. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about Cambridge, the main thing, is driving there. I'd never drive there. It's it's too much one-way streets and all that. I get confused. Yeah. I always get the park and ride. I, I would probably drive so far, maybe to Bar Hill, maybe maybe a bit further, then catch the park and ride bus into Cambridge. <laughs> uh, free trade. Good morning from Surrey. Hello. Thank you for joining the live stream, free trade. Uh, Mr. Dave, hello. Good morning to you. Good evening, should I say. Uh, Bartos, how are you doing? Uh, uh, Otter of Philippines attend church in UK too. Yes, I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, there'll be there'll be a lot going on at the churches over here at the week this weekend. That's for bloody sure. A lot of Filipinos attend church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big old thing over here. Very religious country. I know back in in England, you wouldn't you wouldn't know much about religion really if you just walked around the streets. But over here, even if you're not looking at a church, there are so many vehicles, like a lot of these tricycles and stuff with the little cabs and all the sidecars and all that. There will be uh, slogans on the side, you know, God is love and, and all stuff like that, plastered all over them. So even a lot of the lorries, you'll see, <coughs> you'll see religious symbols all over them. Uh, Stephen, Easter eggs, three pound when you use your club card. <laughs> oh, don't get me started, bloody hell. <laughs> Flipping heck. Do you know what? I don't like that. Tesco's and, and all, a lot of these shops, they, they go, they've they gone to the point where if, if you don't have their club card, you can't get any deals. And even if you've got their bloody club card, their deals aren't that flipping great anymore. Do you know, oh, I prefer the old days where a shop would sell a product and if it had that product, they could put it a bit cheaper and then anybody could buy it. But now they're all going like, you've got to have our card. Uh, Alan, have you done any farming yet? No. <laughs> no. I do help out occasionally with the, the ducks and picking the eggs up and I, I do a bit of a uh, delivering eggs here and there to people that buy them but i'm not actually do, doing any farming at all no uh, 
uh, Nomadic Mechanic, evening from Ireland. Hello, over there in Ireland. How are you doing? One minute. At Steve Perry, quicker it would be in the UK. Oh, here's a familiar name. Hello, Mick. How are you doing? Happy Easter to you. Seen a veto yet? I don't think I have. There probably are. I've seen some Mercedes lorries out here, but I've not seen a veto. Most of the actual minivans and all that, and they're, they're all Toyotas and Hyundais. But no, not yet. Uh, Bass, did you lose some weight? <laughs> Pass? I haven't got any weighing scales over here. <laughs> I, just, I don't even know what I weighed. I'm probably about, I was around about between 68 and 70 kilograms. So I don't know what I weigh at the minute, but I should think I probably am losing weight. I'm probably sweating it during the day. It gets that flipping hot. Uh, Doug, hello. I'm living in South Wales. My wife is Welsh and I'm Irish originally from Cork. I hope yourself, Ken and Tyler, are well. I used to love all the videos of you and Monica. Are you still in touch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually uh, did message Monica the other day. And at some point, she is going to join in one of the live stream streams. So I, I, what I'll do, do is when we arrange the time, we'll set a live stream up and she'll come up on the screen as well. And we'll have a chat about what's going on here and back in England and stuff like that for a little while. So that that is in the pipeline. <clears throat> Hairy news. <laughs> hey, come across any Mondeos? No. Zero at the minute. I know there are some because I've been told, but they're up like north, not here. I'm in Mindanao, so I've not seen any, not one. I have seen some Ford Focuses. I've seen an American Ford Focus and a few other Focuses which look a bit more like British ones, but they're probably not. And I've seen a couple of Fiestas. Oh, hello, Mr. Mondo. How are you? Won't mention the M and don't want... Ken racing out and, and giving you your another ear <laughs> bashing. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Alan, are you going to meet up with your old friend Sir Gary Glitter when he gets out? <laughs> oh my god, Gary Glitter. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although I have to admit. I do remember back then, all, all them years ago, all them years ago, flipping Gary Glitter, bloody hell. <coughs> Hello, Neil, how are you? Uh, M&K from Melbourne. I'm enjoying watching you all, you settle in, mate. Well, thank you very much. Melbourne, that is... South Australia, right on the southern tip, is it, around there? Long way from here, isn't it? It's unbelievable how big Australia is. It's hard to picture. You could put the UK into all the Philippines, into Australia, and I don't know how many times. But anyway, happy Easter. Uh, Chris, Alan, can't you get a work permit due to your partner's dual nationality? Not being weird enough, just interested... Uh, I wouldn't want a work permit. I don't want to work. If, if if I was to do anything over here, I mean, it's it's like all, all the years I've worked, I don't want to come over here and work. It's like I'm I'm just like relaxing, being a, a like a beach bum, if you could say. <laughs> really, I haven't come over here to work. And as there's, there's, there are laws against foreigners coming over here and working, and if like starting businesses up and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's, it's not something I've got in my pipeline of doing. Ken has her own little business going, which I've helped her with. So if she can make money out of that, then all well and good. That's good enough for me. But as far as me doing any work, it's like I would help her with what she's doing 
but I wouldn't be starting any projects of my own. Uh, Jules, Jules, hello. Is there much crime over there? I've not seen any. No, I've not seen any at all. Uh, <laughs> that's all I can really say. There, there, no doubt there is, but it, it's a different. It's a different atmosphere over here. In in England, you can walk down. You know, if you're walking at night down any high street, I guess in any town or city, you kind of like watching yourself. Uh, over here, as far as what I've seen, you know, everybody's been nice. People say hello to you all the time, and you know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm in any kind of trouble here. If you see what I mean, I feel quite safe. So I feel a lot safer here than what I did in England. I feel I haven't got to watch my back. I know, obviously, you've got to be aware because the, the, the things can happen. But I think generally as a rule, if, if you're mindful of your, of your surroundings and where you are and the people around you, you know, and you're respectful, you're probably going to stay out of trouble here. <laughs> uh, Andrew, hello, how are you doing? Are you, are you still in Africa? I'm like you, a bit lazy learning the local language. Well, I think I think when we get to our kind of age, it's it's not an easy thing to learn any kind of new language. If you if I was young again, like <laughs> if I wish, uh, it's a lot easier to pick these things up. Uh, for me, I can't get my head around that Ugandan language. Back in St. Neots now for a couple of months. Oh, okay, you're back now. Well, I'm sure you had a fantastic time. I have watched most of your videos. I still think think I've got another one to watch though. But yeah, excellent. It's nice. I'm glad you went out there because you showed us like another world, just like me here. It's so different to England. You, you've been somewhere and you've learned something and you've seen so many new things. You know, that's what life's all about. Anyway, good to hear from you, Andrew. Uh, Kate, hello. How are you doing? We love watching you from in Bracknell, England. Please give us a shout out to Adam, Kate, George and Thomas. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Kate, for joining in the live stream. And happy Easter to you, Kate, and to Adam, Kate, George and Thomas. <laughs> Have an excellent Easter. Uh, artisan. Hi, Alan. Hope you're well. I have had hell this year so far as I have had pneumonia and shingles <sighs> I don't know what it's like to have shingles I should think that's bloody uncomfortable uh, as far as pneumonia goes I've never had that but I know someone who has pretty serious stuff so I hope you get well soon mate uh, that minute so I've got everything organized here I've got my phone on silent so no, nobody bloody rings me when i'm through the live stream in case there's any mozzies just flying around i've got my spray and i've got my bottle of water <laughs> anyway uh i won't bang on about this mot lark because i've already made a video on that but just just to point out again there is no actual mot over here if you have a vehicle <clears throat> for most people that actually come over here will probably be on like vacation you don't actually need to have a car or anything like that although you can you can hire a car or you can hire a motorbike i think the majority of people over here they'll just hire a bike it's easy to get around on uh, make sure you're insured make sure you wear the protection it's difficult wearing like a lot of motorbike gear out here because it's so hot but if you've got the right gear on when you're actually moving it will, the, the air will call you anyway i think i'm getting the sun on me i might have to move over a little bit that's that's just made it worse <laughs> one minute oh my god Hang on. <laughs> Technical problems. 
the sun, the sun is coming up and uh, I'm getting blinded. Anyway, uh, yeah. When you come to when you come to the Philippines, public transport is everywhere. This little town I'm in, Maramag, there are thousands of taxis everywhere, and it's like, do you know what? And they're so cheap. They are so dirt cheap, and they're fun to ride. It's part of the whole experience. They say when you come to the Philippines, you need to ride a jeepney. You know the old World War Two um, ex-army vehicles the Americans left behind. They're like an iconic feature over here because they're all most of them have been customized and they're all used as public transport now. I haven't rode a jeepney yet, which is bloody shocking, but that I, I will get round to doing it. But there are so many taxis here, and as I found out, whether it's a moped courier that you can jump on the back of, a tricycle, a tuk-tuk, even even a car, uh, they're cheap. So if you want to get around it's not a problem and you haven't got to sort of like hunt around for most of these taxis they're all they're all over the place everywhere just put your arm out and they'll stop for you so uh <laughs> getting around for the most part is pretty damn easy uh there's, there's a lot of comments I, I was trying thinking i was going to sort of like explain a few things here but i just want to get through some of these people as well uh Please don't ever remove your workshop videos. They are always a great source of... No, I've, I wouldn't get rid of them. I mean, it's all kind of like archaic now, I guess, them, them videos. But I mean, the only way they'll get removed is if YouTube uh, blocked me or banned me. If, if I'd done something on YouTube that pissed YouTube off, they'd, uh, they'd remove my channel. <clears throat> Which I'm beginning to think... <coughs> It's probably pretty easy these days to get banned off YouTube. But I will try to be on my best behavior. <laughs> uh, M&K, I've learned enough Tagalog that the family have to be careful what they say now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Down here, it's Bisaya. So, I mean, I, I knew a few Tagalog words, but there's so many dialects in this country, it's unbelievable. So, uh, I guess if you're up Manila way, you'd be learning Tagalog, which is obviously the, the national language of the Philippines. But here in Mindanao, it's Bisaya. So, that's what I'm having to learn. It's kind of similar, but different. So, <laughs> it gets confusing. <clears throat> Mondo, it's Easter in the UK. Are you going to eat balut? Maybe dipped in charred chocolate? No. <coughs> no, I'm not going to eat balut at all. I had the one egg and it was okay, but it's just like, no, I'd rather I'd rather a hard boiled chicken egg any day. No, it, it just it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. I don't, I don't know what the people over here see in it. It's a big thing over here. They, they love eating it, but I, I just know. <laughs> uh, Steve, good evening, Alan. I will be near Valencia City in June, staying in Bangud. Bangud. Well, good on you, Steve. If you're ever out this way, then give us a shout. I'll probably meet up with you. Have a drink. That'd be nice. Valencia. I do go to Valencia quite often, you know. We go into the Robinson's shopping mall. I went into that Gaisia. I think it's Gaisia mall. It's like a newish one that they've got up there in Valencia. I didn't think much to that mall. I, I prefer the Robinson's. Uh, Dwayne, still here, still here for you, mate. Well, thank you, Dwayne. Yes, sir. <coughs> When I come back for a visit, I will pop round. Don't worry about that. Uh, Richard, hello from Peterborough. Hope you exploring things out there. Great videos. Thanks, Rich. Well, hello, Richard in Peterborough. That's fantastic. Peter Peterborough would be the the main 
city I would go to if I wanted to get anything really, because they don't sell much in Huntingdon. Although the uh, Queen's Gate is a bit, it's a bit dated now when I go in there. I, I, it's, it's a bit sad to see it, you know, now that John Lewis and all that have gone. I don't know. It just didn't seem the same, but yeah, nice city, Peterborough. I like it there. Anyway, happy Easter, Richard. Up the Red Devils, up the Red Devils. <laughs> Loved following your journey, came across you while looking how to change rear bushes on a Mindy. And now look where you are. <laughs> All the, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how life changes, how how things can happen. Life's an adventure, really, isn't it? This is what I mean. Is is I've said this before, and so and I've thought this so many times. You know, I I go back over the years, and I just think about you know one day you're doing one thing, and the next day, boom, your whole life has been turned around, and that that's happened to me a number of times. I will make a video one day, and I'll explain a, a certain number of things. Because I do have something in mind. I've just got to. I've just got to make it. It's, I've just got to sit down and spend about an hour talking. So uh, <laughs> that'll be coming. <clears throat> uh, Mondeo, not a Mindel. Well, I, I, I kind of guessed what you meant anyway. So no worries. Happy Easter. Uh, H Henry, your MOT vid was great. Uh, ben pissing down in. Been pissing down in UK. Yeah, I do follow the weather on my phone's weather app. I've got where I am now, and I've got Huntington, England, because I'm comparing the weather. And I'm still seeing day by day, it's been pretty bloody terrible weather there, rain-wise and cold. And it's I think the weather's slight, the temperature's slightly going up now, but I mean, flipping it, we're nearly into April. So uh, I would have thought it had got a bit warmer by now. Since I've been out here since mid january it has been an average temperature every single day of about 34 degrees so uh and the rain has been very few and far between so it's totally different world out here uh dan hello what's the price of diesel and petrol a liter over there <coughs> That's a good question. What is it in England? I don't know anymore what it is in England, but over here, let me let me just check because I, I, I did check this the other week. Uh, if I go, it's about, depending where you go, it depends what, what petrol station you go to. But if I said on a lot of the petrol stations, it's 63 pence. 63 pesos per litre so basically in english money it's 89 pence per litre so what what is it do you know what it is over there in england over here average six, 89 pence a litre i'm pretty sure it's cheaper over here you'd have Dan, you'll have to let me know what it's costing in England per litre so I can compare it. Jeans and T-shirt, you must be getting used to the heat now. The reason I put the jeans on is because it's dawn time. The mozzies like to come out and bite at dawn. So rather than put off lotion on, which is their like mosquito repellent, I, I don't like putting the chemicals on me. I put the off lotion on generally if i go out in the evening but i don't like putting it on in the morning i would rather just put a pair of jeans and a t-shirt on you've got less chance of getting bitten anyway uh steve i use western union when i send money to girlfriend yeah <coughs> do you know what i like about western union and i mean there's a, there's a lot of these remitly why zoom and all that They're, they all do the same thing they transfer money they all charge you but as I found with Western Union, if you go onto their website, they've got a new feature, which has been there a few months now. It's an instant bank transfer. 
So, like, if I bank with Barclays in England and I've got the Western Union app, I've got an account with Western Union, you just sign up to it, obviously. It's free to sign up to it. I can send myself free... I'm, I'm here in the Philippines. So I can get on my phone here in the Philippines. I can send myself... Say I wanted to withdraw a thousand pound in Philippine pesos. I can just do that on my phone using their new bank transfer, and it will cost me one pound ninety. They will charge me one pound ninety, and I, I think you know that for one pound ninety to withdraw whatever sum you want to withdraw, that's a pretty okay figure if you ask me. Nice and cheap. And another thing about Western Union that I do like, they have offices physical offices everywhere all over the world whereas a lot of these other places you have to go into a bank and get your money a bank might do remitly or something like that and when you go into a bank over here it can be a bit of a pain you know having to get a ticket sit down wait to be called out blah 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 it's like i don't want to deal with the banks over here i'd rather avoid them definitely avoid the cash machines over here they're going to cost you dearly. Uh, avoid the cash machines. Avoid the banks. I think, for me, personally, Western Union is the holy grail. So <clears throat> I, I am perfectly happy with Western Union. pound ninety fee for whatever amount of money I want to withdraw suits me tickety-boo. For anybody else, whatever you use, you may probably get something better. You may get your money for absolutely no fee whatsoever, but I'm happy with what I'm doing, so I'm going to stick with that. But whatever works for you, if you find out a much better way, then great. I'm, I'm only sort of like telling you what I've done, so it's, it's, it's what I know is what I know. Okay, hello. Hi, Alan. When you go into Cook Ken, a full English breakfast, anything they can do with pork, we can do better. I am not going to get an English breakfast over here better than what's made in England. It's not going to happen. No way. <laughs> no. In, in fact, when I go back to England for a visit or whatever, I will be making a proper or going to a cafe and getting a proper English breakfast. I, I miss a lot of the food back in England. So uh, it's. I think it's a lot of it's because of where I am. It's hard to find the foods here uh i don't know about the big cities they you can probably get pretty much anything over there in manila and places like that but down here in mindanao you're pretty limited to what kind of foods you can get but if you're creative enough there's markets here with fruit veg meats and all sort of things so you can you can make some really nice meals here you've just got to get creative and make it yourself uh mondo uh, at Harry News, I think his back catalogue videos are his pension fund. <laughs> yeah, people still watch him, uh, unbelievably. And we know that they're getting a bit old now, aren't they? But yeah, they, they will stay there as, as long as, uh, well, as, as long as YouTube allows them to stay there, really. Uh, Darrow, hello, Poland. Happy Easter over there in Poland. Thanks for being on YouTube. Helped me a lot with my... Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I used to enjoy making the videos. That's why I did them. Uh, but happy Easter to you, and thanks. Uh, Daniel Skit. Hi to you, Daniel. Happy Easter. Hi, missing you working on cars. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's life, isn't it? Uh, everything changes sooner or later. Now, now I'm working on nothing. <laughs> now I'm working on, on making the odd video here and there in the Philippines. Uh, it, it keeps me busy. I do, Alan. I'm a Catholic, not a practicing one, but it's always with a Catholic. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Catholics over here. Uh, I would imagine you would have to pull another notch on your trouser belt, not eating British junk food, and all over this water, water you're consuming may be healthy. Well, yeah. 
most of the foods we eat, especially like meat and stuff, it's all fresh. So, uh, there are, you know, I do eat stuff like spaghetti, you know, that you cook, the, the long spaghetti you cook in, in water, boil, and uh, sauce that goes on it, stuff like that. So I do have some foods which are kind of similar, but it's like I got, I got a watermelon the other day, huge, great big bloody watermelon, and it's like flipping egg, it is enough to feed like 20 people. But you're, you're spilt for choice over here when it comes to fruit and veg. I mean, I know in England that, that the main things I would stick to would be bananas, apples, tangerines, and stuff like that. But here, that the fruit is like there's so much variety, and you, you've got to try a lot of it. And it's so a lot of them are so nice. But yeah, uh, food food is sort of like plentiful here. That's there's one thing I've no, I've kind of noticed wherever you go, there's food. It's literally everywhere, even throughout the not throughout the night. There are people cooking food by the side of the road. It's a lot of it's street food, and I don't know if I'd really want to sort of like be living off that sort of thing. So I don't know how well it's been prepared and all that. But I mean, for the locals and that, the people that, that eat it and are used to it, uh, you know, as long as you've got a few pesos in your pocket, you're never going to go hungry. The, the, the dogs here never go hungry, the amount of scraps they get. Uh, Interceptor, hello. You must be missing the Ford Mondeo. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't really think about the Mondeo as much anymore. I, I did used to like fixing them, though. I think back of, of all the years I fixed all the Mondeos from the Mark I through to the Mark V. They were good days. I had a lot of happy times at Steve's. I, I remember them well. Uh, good memories but yeah i think if i walked back into the garage now it'd feel really strange so uh <laughs> i will i will have to one point because when i come back to england for a visit i'm going i will go back to steve's and, and uh have an evening out of steve no doubt or something like that so uh but yeah uh harold hi hi to you harold and happy easter Uh, Maine, horrible to drive in Cambridge. Hope everything goes well for you from an ex-taxi driver. I oh, used to be a taxi driver. Yeah. yeah, I never did like driving in Cambridge, all them one-way streets and all that. I could never get my head around it. Never find where I was going. There was always like a road blocked off or something like that, and I couldn't get to where I needed to be, and it's like, oh, confusing. Mm. It's, it's like over here. <coughs> uh, I find it, believe it, this, this is strange, but I could never ever get my head around a bus timetable in England. Never could work it out. Maybe I'm just thick, but over here, no matter what I want, whether it's a taxi, well, taxi is obviously straightforward. You just say to the taxi driver where you're going. But as far as buses go, you haven't got a problem it's so easy to find where you want to go you just walk into the bus station and before you've even found the bus you're looking for there'll be guys walking up to you asking you where you're going and you give them a few pesos and they'll tell you what bus to get on it's <laughs> it's a win-win situation really that's their job that's how they make their money just putting people on buses <laughs> i think it's great <laughs> Uh, Neil, hello. How is the Philippines treating you? It's uh, very well. It's very lovely over here. It's a bit, it's a bit hot. It's like hot every day, and it's getting hotter because we're getting April time. April May is like the, the height of the summer. If you're not used to the hot weather, and it's a, it's a humid, sticky heat, uh, it can really get to you if you know what I mean. You, if, if you're over here and you don't like this heat, you're probably best having a bloody good fan or at least having to be living somewhere where there's air conditioning. Put the air conditioner on and it's great. If you're obviously living in a con condo or something like a high rise, you probably open the windows and get the wind blowing through or something like that and uh, cool you down. But it's uh, it's uh, it is pretty much full on heat out here. So it takes some getting used to. Obviously, 
like everything else in life, if you stay here for long enough, you'll figure it out and you'll get around it and you'll learn to live with it. Uh, curbside Classics, hello. Even now, how are things going? It's going fine. I'm uh, oh, get away. taking it day by day, getting there slowly, kind of adjusting to everything. It takes time. I think after, I mean, I've only been here two and a half months, so I'm still in that sort of like, I, I reckon probably after about six months, I should be at a point where I'm getting comfortable. But at the moment, I'm still sort of like trying to fit in and trying to learn a lot of things. That, that was the whole point of this video. A few basic things that I've, I've kind of learned over here in that two and a half months. So, uh, yeah, you've, you've got to kind of work it out for yourself. I mean, if, if people like me, I'll come over here, I could give you all the advice in the world of what I've done. But you may come over here and find it totally different. You might be in a different environment to what I'm in and, and things are just not the same. And what I'm saying might not work for you. But it's all a learning curve, isn't it? I, I think the best way to, to, to get through life is to, uh, is to do the research you can and then if you actually go somewhere, then it will probably won't be quite the same as what the advice you've been given. And you have to sort of kind of like, kind of feel your way along. You make mistakes through life and uh, you learn by your mistakes. Uh, Neil, where are you staying in the Philippines? My wife from Philippines. I'm in Maramag uh, town, just outside Maramag town. It's in uh, Bukinon. Mindanao. So I'm, I'm down south. I've not actually done a great deal since I've been here. So, you know, when when people come to the Philippines for vacation and that, they go to Shirgao and Boracay and Palawan and uh, Bahal and all these tourist places. I've not been to any of them. I am here in Mindanao, kind of, it's kind of rural here. So as far as all the big tourist areas go, I've not experienced that yet. I have got plans to do a few trips uh, at some point, but here in Mindanao, it's uh, in Bukinon, it's, it's, it's mountains everywhere. It's very picturesque, lovely scenery here. If you get to go driving around on a motorbike or car or just walking around, you can see the mountains all around you. It's absolutely, there's, it's just awesome sights. But uh, there's, there's things I want to do here. There's places I want to go. But before I do a lot of that, I mean, I want to go to, apart from the white sand beaches, which I aren't going to see anytime soon, I want to go to General Santos. It's uh, It's a city that's just south of Dabo City, which is the, the main city in Mindanao. It's a long journey from here. It, it's hard to imagine how big Mindanao actually is. It's a huge land mass. So uh, give you some kind of idea from where I am. It's about a three, three and a half hour drive to get to Dabo City. And then to get from Dabo City to General Santos would be probably another three hour drive. So uh, as you can imagine, quite a distance. But yeah, uh, uh, that's that's where I am, Mindanao. So uh, when I actually sort of like get to travel into other places, I want to go to Comegan Island as well, which is uh, north of where I am. It's about a three hour drive to Cagayan de Oro, which is a city up north in Mindanao. I can get a ferry across the, the water to Comegan Island. Apparently there's some uh, beautiful scenery there and beautiful beaches and stuff. So I'm going to have a go at that. Anyway, I better move on. Uh, Archie, hello from Wales. Watched you for years. Well, thank you, Archie. That's it. Uh, thanks for joining the live stream and happy Easter to you. Tech the man. Good day from Melbourne. Just got up. And <laughs> well, 
Well, hello over there in Australia. <laughs> Have you got to put another shrimp on the barbie? <laughs> Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> anyway, happy Easter. Uh, do they celebrate Easter in the... Yes, they do. Yes, Easter is huge, absolutely huge thing over here. But it's it's in church they celebrate it, not in the shops. <laughs> you don't see chocolate Easter eggs. In fact, <clears throat> when I go into town, and this is now Saturday, when I go into town, I'm going to go into the supermarket over here, and I'm going to walk around the shelves with my phone and take some video. And I'm going to see if there is anything Easter related in the shops. I don't think I'm going to find anything. No, they do celebrate Easter big time over here, but it's they go to church. Uh, fellow tractor, do you drink the tap water? I only ever see you drink the bottle. No, no. I, I strongly advise you to stay away from tap water. I wouldn't even drink the tap water in England. I don't trust it. I don't trust the government in England, whether that's Conservatives or bloody Labour. And I certainly don't trust what comes out of the tap. God only knows what chemicals are in it. Uh, I only drink bottled water. Or over here, what we get is the big, they, they do like a 20 litre, bottle it's a big blue bottle that you plonk on top of a dispenser and you just put your cup and dispense the, the water fresh water there's a guy comes around and just sells the water it's dirt cheap i have a drink out of that or i just buy i go down to the supermarket and i buy a whole box of uh, of this nature's spring by the way i'll just point out here while i'm here 500 milliliter bottle of this if you're thinking of buying these bottled waters, nowhere to buy it. Over here, you have what's called 7-Eleven shops. They are convenience stores. They probably sell stuff that you won't find elsewhere. But in my opinion, I would avoid, avoid them shops as best as you can. For instance, in the supermarket in town, one of these will cost you nine pesos. If you go to any other place around, they'll probably charge about 20 pesos. Now, 20 pesos is average about 34 pence in English money for one of these. So you can see the supermarket are charging a third of the price. Well, no, no, no half the price. So, 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 but if you go to a 7-Eleven shop, this bottle of water will cost you 34 pesos nearly double the flipping price they're rip-off shops and they're the same kind of shops you find in england just these fast convenience shops they always double the price or make make everything so expensive so it's, it's knowing where to shop to buy the, the things you actually, you actually want about getting ripped off uh, interceptor must be missing the ford mondeo no 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 <laughs> it'll be sad you know because the mondeos will all be gone shortly just like everything else, they'll be replaced with something else. Talking of that, there's one bit of news I'm quite happy about over here. You know, I, I'm not a fan of EVs, electric vehicles. Over here, you can look this up. You can Google search this. In Metro Manila, they are banning, I think from April, they are banning electric vehicles. <clears throat> not completely, but they are banning electric vehicles in certain roads and streets in metro manila they say because there's been a number of accidents which electric vehicles have been involved in and out for public safety they want to keep a lot of these electric vehicles off the roads off certain roads uh, that includes electric scooters bikes trikes uh, and i presume cars as well but I think, and, and, and yeah, they also say a lot of the people driving <coughs> the electric vehicles don't even have driving licenses. But I think, <laughs> you know, here in the Philippines, there's probably a lot of people who don't have driving licenses. But I, I think personally, <coughs> it's to do with the heat. I, I think they've realised that a lot of the electric vehicles are causing problems in the heat. You can imagine... You've got this big bloody ass battery powering this electric vehicle and you're in metro manila in all this traffic 
and and the traffic is flipping horrendous and you've got electric vehicle and the heat and that's not doing that battery any good and i think they've had a lot of problems with these batteries and you know what fire hazards these electric vehicles can be that's why they i reckon that's why they're banning them dangerous you can't beat a good old gasoline engine uh happy easter alan is tyler getting used to mozzies yes he is happy easter to you henry yes he is he was exactly the same as me he was getting bitten all over and do you know what it is an absolute pain in the ass getting bitten by mosquitoes but he's at the point now where it doesn't bother him he's not been hardly bitten at all so it's just becoming a non-issue now and that's great but there again if i had to come over here like just for a month say uh, on holiday i'd have probably been bitten all over and it would have it can for a lot of people it can ruin your holiday i don't hear many people talking about them being bitten by mosquitoes when they come over here i don't know i don't hear much about it at all but for me it's, it's been a big issue i'll be i mean i can bitten right left and center but like everything you, you work it out eventually and now as i've found as time has gone by the bites are not staying that they my body is healing the bites really quickly they sting once once the mosquito bites you within the space of like a minute or so you can feel the sting in, in in and you can see the bite mark on you and then it comes up in a lump and all that but after about you know the sting only lasts for a little while now and after about an hour or so you can it's already decreasing and, and then after a few hours well half a day i'd say the bite's practically gone so uh Whereas the bites originally, they were lasting a couple of days after you've been bitten. But I don't even, you know, you can wash the alcohol. That alcohol you used to wash your hands during COVID and all that. If you get a wet wipe, put the alcohol on the wet wipe and wash wash all the bites with it with the alcohol. It's lovely and soothing. Use that. It, it helps a lot if you do get bit. But me and Tyler are now at the point where if we get bit, we don't scratch the bites. Don't ever scratch the bites, whatever you do. If they, if they do itch at all, use that alcohol. But now we're at the point where we just ignore them. The few bites that we do get, they're not really uncomfortable and they heal up ever so quick. So we're adapting to actually how things are out here. It's the same with the food. If, if you eat the food out here, you'll probably get the shits. You'll probably have diarrhea. It's going to happen. But, you know, like everything, once again, if you eat enough of it over a period of time, your body will slowly adjust to it. It's, you know, it's just, it's, it's different out here. The atmosphere, di everything's different. You don't kind of like realise it until you actually get here and you have to physically experience it. Now, what is, what is the flipping time? It's quarter past seven. Blimey, we've been going for an hour, over an hour now. Uh, Stephen, that dog behind you has spent most of its time scratching. <laughs> <laughs> do you know something there's quite a lot of dogs here and they all come and sit on the porch and they're all like getting their legs up and all the flipping time it's like sometimes i'll sit here and there's three or four dogs all with their legs up going nin, 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 and i'm thinking flipping neck <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, retro hello liverpool hello retro I've been following you for years because I own a Mark IV and loving your new job. Well, thank you, Retro, and happy Easter to you. Have a good, have a good one over there. <coughs> Matty, you should hire a motorbike and film your quest to find a Filipino Monteo. <laughs> Do you know something? I, I could borrow Tyler's bike. I, I really want to get on a motorbike and I mean, put it this way. <clears throat> when I was young, I had a, this is a bit embarrassing actually, my first bike was what was a, a twist and go, it was a Honda Melody, so I won't talk no more about that, but then I bought a Vespa 125, which was 1983, 84, it was a Vespa 125cc, and I put a Ginelli, Ginelli, 
uh, expansion box for an exhaust, which sounded quite nice. And I went to a scooter run at Red Car. Fantastic. But no, I used to ride a scooter. And the only other bike that I've ever owned was an, I forget the name of it, it's an FS1E Fizzy. <clears throat> but since then, I mean, that was, that was a lifetime ago. I've never had motorbikes. I've always had a car after that. Uh, but over here, nearly every other person owns a bloody motorbike because it's so convenient. They're not big on cars out where I am here. Even if you go to the local supermarket in town, there's probably about 10 parking spaces for vehicles. And most people who come down here, they come on bikes and they get their shopping and they, they convert something on their bike to hold their shopping or whatever. So, and it's the easiest way to get around is on a bike. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking at some point, it's going to be a bloody good idea just to get a motorbike. Not just so much the fact of getting around easy, it's because you're in the beautiful sunshine all the time and you can just jump on a bike and go and you're free. And plus it's just a good feeling to ride a motorbike. I mean, most of the bikes here, they're, they're not big bikes. They're all around about 125, 150 cc, that sort of, sort of range. So they're not powerful bikes. And I don't, I don't even see people thrashing bikes around. Most of the bikes I see going about, they all just drive at a nice steady pace. But yeah, it's, it's, it's in the line. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out on a bike eventually and uh, I will film it. But at the moment, I might get Tyler just to give me a ride around and I'll sit on the back with a camera. So I don't fancy trying to film when I've got the camera because I haven't got nothing to hold the camera onto the bike with. I'll have to sort of like make something up. Anyway, Matty, I better move on. Uh, Roman Nomad. The Easter egg is a symbol of the resurrection. Jesus rose from the tomb. The egg is new life. All oh, right. So that's that's... You've, you've gone back and, and looked up how Easter eggs have become part of uh, Easter. Well, thanks for that. I, I knew there'd be a perfectly logical explanation for it. <coughs> Daniel, hi, Alan, UK is rubbish. Yeah, well, it's, it's the... Uh, It's the government's in it. It's the people in charge that are destroying the country. It's sad. It's really sad. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. What can you do? We need a government that are actually going to look out for the country and the people in the country rather than selling it out. Anyway. Ghost man, it's Wang Yong Buntag in the morning. Yes. It's, 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 you know what, when you speak Bisaya, it's getting, being able to, <coughs> because I'm English, my mouth can't speak the way the locals speak. But it's like Wang Yong, I don't even know I'm, I'm saying it right, but it's Wang Yong Buntag in the morning. That's good morning. So, uh, Man Yong Hapon, afternoon. Mian Yong Gabi, good evening. I know them three phrases. And it's like if you want to say how are you, it's it's saying it right, isn't it? You can say uh if I'm English, I'd probably say camus cam camusta, but it's not, it's camusta. You've 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 got <laughs> you've got to say the, the words in the right, you know, pronunciation. That's that's the that's the harder bit, but anyway, I, I'm trying to learn a few words and get here and there. <laughs> I'll get it eventually. It is nice to uh, to actually learn a bit of the language. I've I've learned uh, Dagan Salamat, which is a uh, thanks very much. So uh, anyway, Ghostman, happy Easter to you, Phil. You're a YouTuber for work. YouTuber for work? No, no. YouTube is, uh, 
it's a hobby. <clears throat> the only reason I actually made a YouTube channel was because I, I was quite interested in photography and cameras. And it's sort of like there was there was one particular day I thought to myself, I'm going to talk about the, the wet belt on, on the Mark IV Mondeo, the 1.8 TDCI. And I thought, what if I film that and put it on YouTube? And I'm going back some years now. But uh, I never I never started YouTube to actually make money. I mean, it makes a few shekels, but it's, it's not a lot. I mean, my channel is tiny. So, but I mean, I don't go out my way to actually sort of like make money off this as, as purposely. It just happened one day that you get a little bit out of it, which helps, I guess. But no, you can't. You can't rely on you. I mean, unless, unless you're actually a career-driven person that you're specifically using YouTube to make money off, uh, you'd have to get up every day with a full-on intention of, of I'm going to do something today and use a, a title to catch people's attention. And you know, so a lot of people are like that, and, and and a lot of people have made a fortune off YouTube. But you've got to be dedicated at it. I've never been actually dedicated at it. For me, it's been like a, it was a distraction at work. It was something to, to you know, make the day better. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. It was fun doing it. Uh, David, hello. How you come across any snakes? Uh, no, not yet. But there's a lot of sugarcane fields out here and forests and stuff like that. But I won't go there. I won't go running through them fields or through the forests. Not so much because of snakes, more because of the insects. If you go into a forest out here at the wrong time, then uh, be prepared to be attacked by every insect going and eaten alive. So I kind of, I kind of avoid that kind of thing. But no, not seen any snakes yet. I know there are some, but when I see one, if I've got my camera with me, I'll film it. Alan, do do a overnight camp out. <laughs> I don't know if I didn't do something like that. That might be possible if I was to go up to one of the mountains and get a, a view for the morning, like I done one of them videos where we, where we went up to the and got the sunrise on top of the mountain. That would be pretty cool. So that that might be in the future. Graham. Happy Easter to you. Have a good one over there. Milton Keynes went up by all accounts, and I'm glad I live in the West Country. Isn't a slower way of life, but we do all right down here, yeah. Yeah, I guess it all depends where you live and uh, how things are where you live, how your life is. It might be great. I mean, for a lot of people, they're... Uh, you know, England's in England is not a great place anymore. But it depends what your life is like, how you're living. So how it's working for you. Uh, John, Highland from a wet high Wickham. It's good to hear the crime rate is very low there, unlike the UK. Yeah, do you know, I, I haven't Googled anything like crime statistics or anything like that over here. I just don't know. But I don't, I don't see anything going on. So, and once again, one, most of the people that you come across over here, they're they're nice. If you say hello to them, they'll say hello back. And it's not like there's people looking at you and and you know <laughs> you, you kind of feel uneasy. I don't feel uneasy. So, no, it's, it, it feels like a very very safe place to be. Greetings from Shirebrook, Derbyshire. Well, hello, Merrick, and have a good Easter, mate. Uh, West Country people would be all right out there. We can farm and our success are resourceful. Yeah. <coughs> when you come out here, especially in, in rural areas, you'll kind of get a picture of what the people are like over here. And it is absolutely unbelievable when you think about most of us back in England, how we go to the supermarket and buy our weekly shopping, stick it in our freezer, and, and that's it. We're done. 
uh, over here, it's different. The, the people here, they they are tough and very re resourceful. They know how to live. They know how to catch animals, kill animals, cut them up, fish and all sorts of things like that, chickens. You know, it's like how many people in England can, can catch a chicken, kill it, pluck it and cook it? You know, a lot of people wouldn't know how to do that. It's the same with all the the fruits on the trees and everything like that here. People over here, they just know how to live off the land. It's it's uh, it's very inspiring when you watch a lot of them, how they live. And it's how they've been brought up. They don't rely on supermarkets to get their food. So uh, it's well worth sort of like experience these, these sort of things. And if you can learn, you, you mean if you stick around them long enough, you can learn it yourself. Uh, Ghostman, so I forgot the time difference. My wife is over here in UK. No McDonald's fries, rice, no milkshakes. Apple pies are smaller, but the people are genuine there. Mate. Yes, <coughs> definitely. <coughs> uh, Kate. Thank you for the shout out. Also, my husband, Adam, is a mechanic and MOT tester and loved watching your Mondeo videos. Do they have DVSA road checks? Uh, I'm a bit on the unknown side of things here. We've been stopped at some police checkpoints here in the car. But when they pull you over, they, how can I put it? They just check to see who's in the car and then they wave you on. I've seen a pickup truck get pulled over for having people sat in the back and they'll probably get a fine, but then they'll just carry on. Uh, I have seen, I have not the police, but I've seen groups of people with uh, like high vis vests on. I don't know who exactly who they are, but there's something to do with traffic enforcement and they will be pulling over either motorbikes or lorries and checking them. And I guess they might be doing certain checks on them by the roadside. But I don't really know what they're going to be checking and what the penalties are. That's something I, I'd have to look into. But there are, there are checks being done on vehicles, but I think they're very lax. And I think a lot of it is just a case of, say they pull a lorry over and they find a fault they'll probably give you a ticket and you might get fined but then they'll just let you go on your way i don't think they impound the vehicles unless they'd have to be pretty damn serious to impound a vehicle here so uh when i find out some more information then i'll probably make a video on it but i'm not entirely sure here because i've not i've not actually gone through this i've not been pulled up by the side of the road by anyone and they've actually inspected the vehicle so <laughs> maybe later on when i actually do get stopped if it ever does happen and uh they want to inspect the car or something like that then uh i'll have a better idea i can ask some questions anyway thank you kate for that question uh is there a gap in the market for an irish bar <laughs> there probably is i think uh a lot of people out here drink alcohol in the supermarkets, uh, especially one in town. There's like, like case, you know, big baskets full of bottles of rum. They drink a lot of rum out here. Uh, I have seen a few bars which are quite trendy, actually, quite nice. So uh, the only thing is, if you're a foreigner and you want to open a bar, it's it's a bit dodgy. <laughs> I think you've got to be going in with a Filipino partner. So uh, there's a lot of red tape to it. Uh, James, greetings from Ireland. Hello, James, and have a good one over there. Have a good Easter. How are we getting on with these comments? Blimey, there, there's there's loads of comments. I'm <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get through them all. I had to put a, a prop shaft in a Kawasaki mule, Alan, mud and rain. I have a stinking cold and had a few ciders. Now waiting for my Chinese special curry. Oh, Chinese curry. That sounds nice. I do miss a curry. <laughs> You're making me jealous now. 
Uh, Chris, hello over there in Australia. Your climate is pretty much what I've got here. Nice hot Easter. Uh, James, just come on. How is Tyler? He's been ill all night. He's been staying around one of his mate's houses. So I haven't seen him this morning. I'll have to wait till he gets back to see how he's doing. But as, he, uh, as things are going over here, he's having the time of his life. He's loving it. I said, I said to him, you know, a few times, how, how's things going? How do you like it? He goes, I don't want to go back to England. I want to stay here. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. <clears throat> uh, James Tyler is filling his boots. I would have <laughs> been like a rat up a train by a bit his age. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't actually got a girlfriend, but... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Stephen, you know, mate, you're looking well. Don't get too hot. No, it's uh, in the heat of the day. It gets a bit much. I have to sort of like stick the fan on me and go. <laughs> How much is car tax and insurance over there? <coughs> there is no such thing, I don't think, as road tax. Uh, on that video I just done about the, the inspection that was done, the registration renewal, I think the uh, the tax is kind of like all in on on it on that inspection. When you re renew your registration, that includes the tax. So there is no separate road tax, so to speak, of over here. I think I should have made that video a bit better and tried to explain it better. The, the problem is here, here's the story on that video. Ken goes, oh, I've got to go into town this morning. So I thought, do you want me to come? I thought, yeah, I'll come with you. So she goes, I've just got to pop into the LTO, which is the land transportation office. I wasn't really listening. And then we pulled up outside this land transportation office. I said, well, uh, what are we doing here? She goes, oh, I'm getting my car tested. I said, you what? She goes, I'm getting my car tested. And I'm like, oh, like an MOT test? She goes, yeah. I thought, well, well, why don't you tell me? I could make a video on this. This would be quite interesting. So it was like I, I got my phone out and, and made that, that video on the spot. It wasn't planned or nothing. So I didn't have all the facts to hand. But basically, if you own a car over here, from what I can gather so far, once a year, you will have to renew what's, what's called renew your registration, which includes road tax. And it's a quick check on your car of the emissions. And they may... Not in our case, but they may check your tyres and lights. So it was all very quick and easy and, and done. And unfortunately, because of the Easter weekend and they were on half day when we done had our, our car tested, uh, we have to go back on Monday or Tuesday to pick the paperwork up. So when I get the paperwork picked back up, I'm going to find out about whether that test covers you insurance wise on that vehicle for the following year or whether you have to literally go out and buy insurance separately i will find that out later anyway <clears throat> graham i have i live near stansted airport airport and i paid one pound 53 for diesel one pound 53 per liter that's yeah i can understand that any motorway services or anywhere near an airport is going to be hiked the price up aren't they that's bloody extortionate uh i'm going to when i go out i'm going to check the price of diesel over here as well as petrol and i'll i'll, I'll i might put a post on my youtube post to tell you what the price is as of now what diesel and petrol is i know as of now the, the, the petrol here is about nine let me just check it again. Uh, yeah, 89 pence per litre over here for, for unleaded. That's 95 ron. Uh, Lisa and Andy, £1.50 per litre for diesel. Yeah, that's, that's dear. That's bloody well dear. Uh, Dan. At my local petrol garage, it costs me one pound fifty three a litre for diesel and petrol. Oh, thank you, Dan. Petrol is one forty four a litre. 
but I only use diesel, so don't tend to look at the petrol much. That does sound about right, though. One pound forty-four a litre for petrol. Yeah, it's 80, 89 pence a litre for petrol here, give or take. It depends what garage you go to. Some are higher than others. <clears throat> uh, Terry, hello. Going to have to watch this again as I've missed the first fifty-four minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I do waffle on sometimes. I'm going to have to cut this live stream shortly, guys, because uh, I've got to go out this morning. I've got to go to Kezon Town. I like going through Kezon. It's uh, it's like a, a bit of a straight. When you go through the town, you can see down. It's like a, it's a, it's a, like a, like an old town in the old Wild West sort of thing. <laughs> it's this lovely sight as you as you head down into the town. Uh, Lucian, around one pound fifty diesel and one thirty-five petrol. Yeah, so it hasn't come down in price any time soon, has it? Uh, Steve, I'm moving to Thailand next month. It's taking me eighteen years. I can't wait. I feel exactly the same way as you do about England at the moment. Even I love this country. <clears throat> have you? I guess you have been onto youtube and all that i guess that's the main place to go to and checks all the other people that are living in thailand to see what they're saying and how they're doing i do get videos popping up about thailand i get a, i get a lot of videos at the minute about people leaving thailand believe it or not something about some new tax law they brought out i haven't really gone into it i don't even know there's anything in it but uh yeah the best the best thing i can say to you is if that's your dream have your backup plan obviously and do it at least go out there and see how you do but obviously have a backup plan stay out there for a while and if you don't like it then you can go back home it's the same for me i have my backup plan <clears throat> because as, as good intentions you might have when you live in another country as nice as it may be you may be there for several months and then you may think to yourself i can't stick this no more and you want to go home <clears throat> so uh you've got you've got to think of what could go wrong and you've got to keep that in your mind but on the other flip side of the coin you've got to be thinking to yourself how can i make this work can i do this and have your forward thinking plan going as well but yeah uh good luck to you all the best i hope you make it and if you don't hey you tried don't worry about failure <clears throat> anyway steve happy easter to you i hope it all goes well uh Vegamite, go to visit Sabah on the island of Borneo. It is nearby. Oh, I'll have to look it up. But I think that's pretty far from me. I will look it up anyway. Uh, Auntie Social, hello. Please do us a day in the life of yourself, Ken, and all the family. <laughs> a day in the life. Yeah, but if I. Uh, if I can manage it, I'll try to. I've got to find something interesting. So, uh, yeah, that'll probably come up. Thanks, anyway. Mango. Happy Shabbat. <laughs> well, thank you, Mango. And uh, happy Easter. Uh, John. Fair play, and we live on a plane. Oh, blimey. <laughs> <coughs> Hope to see a wedding video eventually made. You wouldn't be there unless she made you happy. So enjoy it all. And I'm in Coventry. Oh, Coventry. I only went through there once. But anyway, happy Easter, John. Uh, Dwayne, diesel Tesco, 165. Bloody hell. Petro, 141. You know they're trying to get people out of diesel cars, didn't you? <coughs> Remember all them years ago, 
the, the Tories try to sell, try to tell you, you know, the big advertising campaign, buy a diesel car, that's the future. Now they're telling you, no, don't drive a diesel no more, they're dirty. The funny thing is, most diesel cars these days, they're unbelievably clean. You see how the government sell your lies? They keep selling, they haven't changed, have they? Uh, John, well, Jeffrey Donaldson resigns as DUP leader after historic sexual offence charges. <laughs> uh, Steve Boyd, hello. Good luck in the Philippines. I'm moving out of England next month and I can't wait. Work 47 years and now this is my time. Great to keep on coming, mate. Well, good on you, Steve. Like I say, take all your precautions, do all your homework, and hope it all works for you. You've only got one life, so you've got to do what you've got to do. Not many Mark Foreman Dales about now. My 1.8 diesel snapped its wet belt this time last year. It is now in Mondo heaven. Yeah, that was the fate of many of them engines. Then again, it was an expensive job to change the belt anyway. Uh, Stephen, my, my mark for it is a soldier. It's still here doing the business. <laughs> Hello, mate. Uh, good luck in the Philippines. I'm moving out. Being in my yep, I've seen that comment. Uh, John, I might move. <laughs> uh, Steve, I hope the pigs are kept in humane conditions. <clears throat> I think anybody who looks at pigs, you need to look out how the pigs are looked after in this country. And if you look at pigs that are in tight cages, the female ones, when they're giving birth, there's a reason for that. So you really, rather than me trying to explain it, you want to go and look at commercial pig farming in the Philippines and you'll see that there are hundreds of pigs in these very con conditions. That's the way they are. This is not England. This is the Philippines. This is how people make their money. So before you start coming up with keeping pigs and letting them roam all over the place, you want to understand how people look after the pigs over here. This is their country and this is how they look after the pigs. And it ain't going to change for someone who wants to talk about pigs' rights. <clears throat> uh, John, I'd love to, to live in Barbados. I've never been there. Caribbean. <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely. Uh, they're three times kind of all fed up now. Yeah. Uh, Dave, morning, Alan. What time do you go to bed and get up now? Uh, normally, we'll go to sleep about, which isn't much different to England, actually, around about 10. Maybe a bit, maybe a bit later. What I generally tend to do is I'll put a film on. I'll watch a movie in the evening. So, so sort of like by the time that's finished, it might be like 11 at night. So then I'll go to bed. And I'm normally up around about half five, six, sometimes a little bit later, quite early. Because it's so like nice out here and it's so warm, you kind of get up early. In, in England, when it was like cold, cold weather, if I'm not working, I might stay in bed. Uh, you're right about the SIM card. Yeah, definitely uh, keep your... Well, if you're coming out here for an extended amount of time and you, you're just out here indefinitely, uh, I do suggest keep your, keep your British phone number. Don't let it... Don't cancel your contract. If you can keep yourself on a, on a cheap tariff... Because over here, you really do need a, I mean, not if you're vacationing, obviously, it doesn't matter. But uh, if you were to come over here, say you, say you came over here just for like three or four weeks, it's probably worth just getting a SIM card over here anyway, so you can make phone calls around this area. Uh, and you'd have data on your phone as well. So you've got internet if you haven't got Wi-Fi. So when you're out and about... Uh, if you get the Go 129, you can get plenty of data, so you can use the internet on your phone. But obviously, if you haven't got a dual SIM in your phone, you can take your 
British SIM card out of your phone and just keep that safe somewhere. But if you're out here indefinitely, I would seriously suggest keeping your UK phone number active because you don't know when you may need that phone number for some company like a bank or something like that might want to get in touch with you and they'll only respond to that phone number. They're not going to respond to a Philippine phone number. So I think it's a good advice to, to keep your keep your UK phone number, definitely. Uh, how are you covered if you need medical? Oh, I'm not covered. If, if I need medical treatment, uh, depends on what it is, really. If it's something pretty serious, I would have to be, you know, I had to be treated in a hospital over here. I just have to fork it out. If it's something that uh, I had to get me treated back, you know, if, if it was something wasn't that bad, but I needed to be treated seriously, I'd have to go back to England and do it on the NHS. But uh, I'm not taking out Phil Health, not anytime soon. I've got nothing wrong with my health as of yet. So the problem is with Phil Health, it's not cheap. And I'm not flinging thousands of pounds on health insurance that I'm not going to use. So uh, I'm winging it at the minute. Uh, Ryan, you could work as a specialist mechanic on Western and vintage cars in PHL and could be a good earner. Uh, there aren't many Western cars out here. <laughs> they're, all, they're all Toyota and Mitsubishis and stuff like that. I think the only vintage vehicles out here are like jeepneys and stuff <laughs> and some of, some of the lorries. So, uh, yeah. from the hospital uh, hope all okay yes it's it's doing great I've got to go out surely we've got to go down to Kezon I've got to uh, pick up some eggs if you need the DRS Ellen how will you come on if you need the DRS what's what is the DRS I'm, I'm being a bit thick here <laughs> Okay, Steve Whitfield, those pigs and other animals are well cared for. You can see, you can always tend in looking after them. But the day comes when they are feeding us. It's the way of things. <clears throat> you, 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 do, you get people on here that say, oh, them pigs aren't roaming around. They're, they're in tight cages. When these pigs are pregnant and they give birth to a lot of piglets, they are kept in these tight cages so they don't roll on top of their piglets. Uh, you have to, you, you literally have to understand what you're talking about. I, I thought, when I looked at the cages to start, I thought, bloody hell, that's not very nice. But it's, you go to the commercial pig farming in the Philippines and you'll see them. You'll see how it's done over here. This is, this is what Ken's got. It's just a small farm. However, she is doing what she can for them. The, the cages are being built now. Uh, the, the roof was too low over the pigs, so they were getting too warm. So the, the whole roof has been taken off. And there's her brother-in-law is making the roof a lot higher, a completely new roof, so so they don't get too hot. They're investing in like a, a pressure washer, so they can pressure wash the the pens out a lot quicker and clear them. And uh, it's just making the, the the actual whole pig area a lot more convenient. And quite a few of these pigs, they are let out of the cages anyway, and they're not all at once though. So they they do get their chance to roam around. So that they are, I mean. She spends a lot of time over there. But once again, they're, they're animals and they're there for a reason. They're going to be slaughtered eventually and they're going to be sold and slaughtered in, in the markets and sold on. So and the piglets will be roasted and uh, when they get to a certain size, they roast pigs over here a lot, many special occasions. So uh, a lot of the locals will get a pig, they'll cut its throat and they'll put it on a roaster and roast it. That's what the pigs are here for. They're, they're animals for food. So I don't really get involved in it myself. I'm not, I'm not really like an into animals and farming and all that. But I have asked questions like, why, why are the pigs here? What, why are they in these cages? Why, why this, that and the other? And then when you see the answers to it, then you kind of understand why they do the things the way they do. 
but a lot of people who who will see them and they'll think oh well, well that's wrong that's wrong i don't like that i'm, I'm gonna oh, oh, oh. but you know these people don't know jack shit. You, it's like everything in life if you don't know something you've got to research it to see how things are done wherever they're being done anyway i better move on <clears throat> Uh, they celebrate in the church, not the shops. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go into one of the shops and you'll probably see, I'll probably find that there is zero advertising to do with Easter. No eggs, no chocolate eggs, no nothing. Whereas in England, it's just uh, Easter's everywhere because it's it's all commercialised. Uh, uh can I ask, Alan, do they spray the spray the skies? <laughs> it's pretty much like this every day. Yesterday was the exception. Yesterday, there was a lot of cloud cover. Then the winds came in and then it chucked it down with rain and it was lovely. I took a shower. <laughs> but no, most of the time it's blue skies with white fluffy clouds. <clears throat> Uh, twin turbo diesel. A few electric London buses been going up in flames recently. Yeah, <clears throat> I've not heard of that, but yeah, I can imagine. <clears throat> Do you know what I thought What I was, was prophetic when I, just before I left England, in our Huntingdon town, we've got Sainsbury's supermarket and there's a big car park uh, and they were they had cordoned off half the car park so they could install EV charging points. And I'm thinking to myself, do you know what? What a flicking joke. And do you know, I, I, I watch I watch videos on people that own EVs. And one I watched recently, the guy who bought bought the Porsche, and he's like, he's bought this EV on finance and he can't sell it back to the dealer because it's an older model now and it's not worth nothing compared to what he's buying it for. So he's running at a total dead loss. And if he tries to sell it privately, who the hell is going to want to buy a used EV when it gets, starts to, when the wider public start to realize about these batteries that they are going to fail eventually and they're going to need replacing. It's going to cost a fortune to actually replace these batteries. The EVs are all very well when they're brand new and either you've got a lot of money and you can afford it and it doesn't matter to you or because they, to buy an EV, they're not cheap. They're pricing a lot of people out of the market to buy something like this. And if you own a, if you have a company car, which is an EV, then great for you. If you, you know, it's not costing you nothing. But down the line, when these EVs get a bit older and the batteries start to fail, which they will, because all batteries do fail eventually. They don't last forever. They will need to be replaced. And I can see, because of the costs involved in these batteries, they're going to end up at the bottom of the ocean or in some kind of toxic landfill. So I do not think EVs are the future. I think it is another terrible, terrible idea that the government are trying to push. So... Uh, they know they ought to be investing in other fuels, not electric. Uh, Nigel, hi then. There's a mozzie behind you. That this stuff, right? It uh, that takes them down straight away. Boom, gone. Bloody thing, is it? I'll tell you something, if you've never experienced mosquitoes, they are incredibly quick. It's like I can sit here and I can be looking around for them and they'll still land on you, bite you and be off before you've even noticed. You don't feel them. You don't feel them land on you. You don't feel them bite you. It's only after they've gone that you actually start feeling the stinging sensation. Nasty bloody things. Uh, what would you replace the Mondeo with? That is my dilemma, Alan. I quite like the Tiguan, but are they reliable? My next door likes Hyundai. T 
Tig, tig Yuan's, I guess they're okay, but uh, it's like everything, isn't it? Everything is so technical now. Do you know, for me, I would love to go back to a Cortina, to be honest with you. Simple. I, I'm just I'm just tired of all the technology, of all these, you know, all these cars. They're just a bloody, they're fine when they're, when they're, you know, the first three years. But as soon as they get old and, and people like us can, can afford these kind of cars, you know, they go wrong. Especially of all the emission-related devices that are fitted to these cars. They eventually fail and they're a headache and they're a money pit. And that's that's the problem. Unless you've unless you've got the money to buy yourself a nice car, and if problems go wrong with it, you can just take it to the garage and say, fix it. You know, a lot of us can't afford that. And so you end up with cars that get more and more problems building up because you can't get them fixed. Or even if you take them to the dealers and that the dealers can't even fix them because they're so electrical. Yeah. But I don't know. Everything seems to be going like MPVs, didn't they? You know, SUVs. You know, cars. Are, <laughs> unless you've got a small car now, a three-cylinder engine. I don't. I really don't know what I'd replace the Mondeo. They seem to be doing away with large family saloons. So, for me. I personally might just buy a motorbike <laughs> and be done with it. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. You know them little tuk-tuks over here? You can buy one of them over here, brand spanking new, for less money than what Tyler's uh, Kawasaki KLX 150 cost. And it's tempting. It's very tempting. How do you cope with the emission and animal noises? You get used to it. The dogs, the dogs can be a pain when the whenever something come a vehicle comes down the road, you know all the dogs come out from from bloody nowhere and they're all barking, so they're a pain. But there again, they always alert you when something's coming down the road. The cockerels are always sounding off, which is annoying if I'm talking like now and one is standing next to you nearly and a bloody it's louder than you are. Uh, at night time, you can hear the crickets and all that, and they some of them are really loud. Flipping it, the insect noises here is like deafening. <laughs> but it's, it's it's kind of like you get used to it. You get used to hearing it to the point where it doesn't bother you no more. Uh, Nigel, Moz has bitten me to a slow death. Yeah. I hate the bloody things. Uh, Steve, grow lemon trees and use a lemon in half to rub mozzie bite. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's, there's so many, there's so many tips out there to, to deal with a bit, but uh, I've pretty much got it covered now. I mean, as far as mosquitoes go, they don't really bother me anymore. But they know if the lemon works, then great. Uh, Dan, you are losing weight. Hope you are okay with all things there. Yeah, I don't eat that much, to be honest with you. I mean, occasionally I might have a little bit of breakfast. Most of the time I'll have something like midday and then I'll have a meal in the evening. But I don't tend to snack or anything like that when I'm out. In England, I'd have, I'd have chocolate bars and biscuits and all stuff like that. Since I've been out here, I don't eat chocolate anymore. They do sell chocolate bars over here, but it's not like sold in massive amounts like it is in England. It's, you've got to look for the chocolate bars over here, but I just don't tend to eat it anymore because of the heat. I just tend to stick to my main meals. And now again, because it's hot as well, you're sweating all the time. So I probably am losing weight. You've just got to keep yourself hydrated. That's, that's the main thing. There is a, a substance to spray on the garden to help to get rid of mosquitoes. <clears throat> there probably is. Uh, funnily enough, what out here, there is limited amount of things to deal with mosquitoes. It, because I think for the most part, the population, the people out here, mosquitoes aren't really much of an issue. They're the kind of like, they're adapted to it. 
although they do do the off lotion which you can put on yourself but when i go into the supermarkets and that and i look for mosquito stuff it's very limited indeed uh smt repellent also quite cheap yeah i mean they do a few repellents out here which are handy i had a honda melody as first <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you know something I, I took my honda melody from huntingdon and i rode it on a hot summer's day to hunt stanton and the next morning it wouldn't start again and i got to get it trailered back to a motorbike shop it was called cbh motorcycles back in huntingdon it's long gone now and they repaired it i was only like 16 years old at the time i didn't know stuff all about engines and that they repair they rebuilt the engine and they said all the oil seals in the engine have been melted <laughs> it got that hot uh are there they any mad crazy laws over there eg is it compulsory to call men ladies if the man says he's uh <clears throat> there are transvestites here there are guys who are dressed as women uh which roam around the town but i don't think they're like the woke people there are in the west no no out here it's it's pretty uh it's how you would expect it to be there's no protesters blocking roads for eco oil zealots and all that crap there's uh no out here a man is a man and a woman is a woman there's there's two genders that's that's how it is out here and uh all the ones that do cross dress and god knows what they want to do i think they just get on with it i think it's just accepted i haven't actually come across any that i've spoke to but i've seen them but you know, I, I don't see the madness over here that, that what you see in the West. <clears throat> Do you come across many? No, no, no. I haven't seen any yet. When I do, I will let you know. What is the best Mondeo, Alan, in your opinion? I would say my, the, the best Mondeo all round for reliability is the Mark IV. The Mark V was kind of like a higher, more prestige, flasher car, you could say. But the Mark the Mark IV would be the, the choice for reliability for sure. <clears throat> uh, John, go bike. Yes, I am liking the idea of a motorbike. I really am. And believe me. I am no expert when it comes to driving a geared bike. I, I would like to get a geared bike, if anything. There's a lot of uh, semi-automatics out here and twist and goes, but I would like a geared bike. Uh, Tyler's Kawasaki, that's a five-speed, unfortunately. It would be better if it's six-speed, but uh, the gears on that are one down, four up. Uh, I just think it's a lot more fun to have gears. And one, obviously, once you and Tyler, Tyler couldn't even ride the bike. I rode it back from the motorbike shop when we bought it, and I hadn't rode a bike in, in I don't know how many years, and I managed to get it back here because uh, I had an idea of what the gears would be anyway. Uh, but he was very scared about riding it because he's never rode a geared bike. But after like a few days, he's it's like boom, he's picked it up so quick, and now he's just into gear and he's away second nature uh, that's just what the pagans say to convince you to go along with it <laughs> oh god is there a pig being killed in the background <laughs> that that is something i actually wouldn't want to do <clears throat> i wouldn't want it i wouldn't even want to kill a chicken Nah, it's, it's not me. I, I, I think I'll leave that to the people who are actually the locals to do that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
to fit in with what you said uh, was that motorbike that just went past in the background cgi <laughs> no that that was a real motorbike yeah there's there's quite a few people there's, there's a there's a few like residences dotted around this area this is this this road comes down to a dead end and they all have to use the one road to to exit so the, the people who live around the back here they, they've all got motorbikes and they all come up past here I had a Yamaha Aerox, Alan. When then I swapped it for a Kawasaki KMX. I wish I never sold it. I still have my Honda C90 or C90. Bloody hell! Uh, last of them made on a 52 plate Honda C90 is a classic. Yeah, that's that's what we called this the step through, isn't it? The step through C90. Bloody hell! Yeah, definitely a classic now. There, there's there's something about bikes i think when you when you get older uh if you haven't had a bike most of your life and you did when you were young i think when you get to a certain age it's probably nice to get a bike again and that you get that feeling of absolute freedom when you're out there on the road and here it's a whole new ball game because like in england you've got you've got a suit up with, with your levers and your head crasher and everything over here where i am you've got the choice i mean I would advise anybody to actually wear protection when you're out on a bike because it's uh, if you come off, you can either get seriously hurt or killed. But uh, you've got the choice over here to to not wear a helmet or not wear any protection. So it's however you want to be. If you're just going down a stretch of road or just riding around your bike, you can just be out on with your T-shirt and sunglasses on and no one's going to bother you. The police aren't going to stop you. But uh, Tyler, he just he just he came off his bike. Obviously, uh, he fell off. The only thing that was wrong with the bike was the handlebars were slightly bit out of alignment. So we aligned the handlebars up, and he grazed his arm just here. That's all. He got some scabs there, and he's that's all healed up now. But after that, he said, "You know what? I'm getting all the gear now." When he went to Robinson's in Valencia, there's a motorbike shop there. We he got a decent crash helmet, and he's bought the the. It's not a leather jacket, but it's a motorbike jacket that's got the padding and all that and special materials on it to, in case you come off. And he's got the motorbike trousers now. So whenever he goes out, not all the time, but whenever he goes out somewhere now where he's going out for a decent long ride, he'll put all the gear on so he doesn't get hurt again if he does come off in a light accident. <coughs> anyway, uh, glad to hear EVs are not that popular in Philippines. I got a V8 Mustang. So I'd fit. Oh yeah, flipping neck. That <laughs> that would be great. That would be fantastic over here. Even when I went to the car shows uh, in England to see the Mustangs, the the, the oh the the noise, the sound, the exhaust make. It's just like whoa, lovely. <laughs> yeah, EVs are definitely uh not popular in Metro Manila. I think there's a lot more going on. They're not saying. I think there's been a few fires over there, and they don't like it. They know how dangerous these things are. And when you when you consider that the batteries in these things can be uh, pretty damn dangerous, the heat over here is incredible. I mean, in Metro Manila, on a hot day, it could be like 40 degrees on the road. And you can imagine them batteries cooking, sat there in traffic. Yeah, I think they realise there's a problem. They, they want to they stamp it out before there's anything more goes wrong. Uh, I always preferred the Sierra over the Mondeo. Oh, yeah. Sierras were... I, I like the Sierras. Nice cars. Sapphire. I like the Sapphires the best. Not the hatchbacks, but the Sapphire, the booted ones. And style. Car Addict Garage. Hope you're doing well, Alan. How are you on, on driving over there? Will you need to sit a test or just use UK... Ah. Thank you. Very good point. <coughs> that's that's uh, in line with what I was actually supposed to be talking about today. That's supposed to be one of my bullet points. When you come over here as a tourist, your UK driving license, I guess it's the same for most other European countries, or probably American, America as well. Uh, but 
for a UK driving license, I believe you've got three months you can use your UK license. After that three months, you have to apply for a Philippine license. Uh, <clears throat> that's a problem because you have you can't apply for a Philippine driving license without an alien certificate of registrations, which is your ACR card. So I've applied for my ACR card and you can't get your ACR card straight away. You, you apply for your ACR car, card at the immigration center uh, once you've been out here for two months. So I've now got to go back and pick my ACR card up about mid-April because they told me after I applied for it, come back in a month's time to pick your card up. So by the time I pick my card up, it will be three months. So I'll probably be driving around illegally about a license because by the time I apply for my license and give them my ACR number, which I haven't got yet, until I pick the card up, uh, it's gonna probably take a little while to get my license organized. So it's, <laughs> it's a slow process, but yeah, it's three months from when you enter the country that you have to end up getting a Philippine driving license. I think you haven't got to take a test nothing probably i'm not sure i will find out i will find it all out and uh i'll let you know how that goes honda crx mondeo titanium x can you get a decent cup of tea uh that do you know what that's a very good question i don't know I stopped drinking tea, not coffee, but I, well, uh, I stopped drinking coffee many years ago because I used to drink a lot of coffee. I was finding that coffee was giving me the shits and the shakes, so I stopped drinking it. I then only drank tea, but I stopped drinking tea about two years ago because I was getting headaches, and I believe it was the caffeine in the, in the tea. I used to drink a lot of tea, a lot of cups of tea during a day at work. I stopped drinking tea because of my headaches. I haven't drunk a cup of tea in over two years, apart from the milk tea they sell over here, which is like a, a cold drink with a straw flavored drinks. But I haven't had a proper cup of tea since I've been over here and not in the past two years in England. So I, it's something I've not even looked for. So no idea i don't even know if they sell tea bags oh, <laughs> i'll have to look in the supermarket it's not been on my radar but since you've mentioned it i will have i'll look out for any tea bags and see if they sell them uh ben love your videos i think you inspire many people to people what you, do you do for drinking water uh, drinking water once again i either use i will buy going to the supermarket and I will buy a big box uh, full of these, probably 30 odd bottles of these in a box. And these are like nine pesos each. So they're quite cheap. Uh, buy a big box of them. And in, in the house, we have one of these big blue clear bottles sort of thing that you put on a dispenser. It's got about 20 liters of water in it. And you just, just dispense the water out of that. Don't drink the water out of the taps, not a good idea. People also did that in the UK 60 years ago. <laughs> Mondeo was a much better car than a Sierra. I remember the first Mondeos. It was radical and new. Sierra was a good car. I had a Sapphire. But there again, when you think about it, the Sierra was pretty radical when, when you compared it to the Cortina. <laughs> Bloody cockles. Yeah, I used to love the Mark III Cortina because I had I had a few of them. Even the Mark IV and V Cortinas, I loved them. But then the Sierra come out and it was like, wow, the Sierra was supposed to be this aerodynamic car. And once, the, but there again, by the time the Sierra had run its turn and the Mondeo was brought out, yeah, the Mondeo was like a, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it. It was like modern. It was like so much more modern compared to the Sierra futuristic but yeah you're right ah, ah! 
Good morning. Well, good morning to you, girl, and have a good Easter. What is the time? It's now eight. So bloody hell, I've been running for ages. Guys, I'm going to have to call it a day. I, I think I've covered my main points I was going to talk about. Just remember, when you come out to these countries, you are a guest in these countries, and uh, try to soak up as much as you possibly can of how life is and how the people live and how things are, and uh, be respectful. That's the best I can tell you. Uh, obviously, do your research wherever you go as much as you possibly can, and when you get to wherever you're going, take it easy. Try not to do anything silly. <laughs> but yeah as i go uh month by month here i'm learning a bit more as i go along in the early part of this live stream i've, I've labored out a few things i think you should do especially when it comes to money know how to withdraw your money keep your cell phone active on your uk or wherever you come from phone number don't just cancel that because you may well need that Anyway, I better call this uh, live stream a halt because I've got to go out and time is getting on now. But everyone who has not, I haven't answered your con comments, I'll try and go through them later and I'll, I will read them. But I have to go now. But thank you, everybody, for joining the live stream. Have a fantastic Easter, everybody. And uh, take care out there. I'll see you all in the next one. So bye for now. <laughs>